trying to outguess nature may actually have the opposite effect. 25 years ago, the FDA approved um, a, a fat substitute called Alestra. I remember. Actually, it has a couple of other names. And they thought that it was okay to put it in junk food. And now 25 years <laughs> later, they're saying that they're nervous about that because they're finding out that it can make people fat. So it can actually make you gain weight, not from the reasons that you would think. But anyway, it can make you gain weight. And also it can deplete you of healthy nutrients that your body needs. So it's an anti-nutrient. It's not a very good substance. And the problem is, is that we... We invented this thing, and they spent $400 million, okay, researching this thing. Uh, and the idea was to try and keep us from absorbing the fat that we eat in our diets. Because this substance, this, this Olestra substance, is actually a sugar derivative. It comes from sugar. And they modify it in a way so that it can bind to fatty acids, which are what make up fat in such a way that the enzyme lipase, which is in the intestinal tract, can't get to it to digest it. So then it just comes right through right you. Right through. It, so guess what some of the side effects are? <laughs> that's <laughs> Diarrhea, true. Diarrhea, cramps, um, oh, no. a little stool leakage that's oily. <laughs> yeah, indeed. And what makes things worse is it turns out that in animal experiments we're showing now that when you give these fat substitutes to rats, that they actually gain weight compared to the placebo. So we don't, I guess, really know exactly why you gain weight. Some some of the theories are that, you know, that, that your body thinks, ah, oh, fat's coming, and so I'm getting all ready for it, and so it acts like it's fat the way. anyway, yeah. like it's regular kind of fat. Well, but it turns off thing, some of the mechanisms that control appetite, and so you wind up just eating more. But the other <laughs> thing I think is that people tend to think, oh, well, if... If it doesn't count and it doesn't have any calories, then I can eat more. That's right. Yeah. Well, whatever it is, it makes you gain weight, just like sugar substitutes do that, too. Well, it's a big disappointment. And, of course, we, you're right. When you start fooling with Mother Nature and think you can outfox her, there's always a price you pay. Bottom line is we have to know how to eat right. We should have a diet that's healthy. And if we do, we're not going to have all these problems. And, and when you think about what happens, you were talking about the fatty acids, but it it binds to our fat soluble vitamins like a d e and k okay. and even some of the carotenoids mm -hmm. and so when it binds with those it takes them right out in the stool with it and yeah. so you're it really is an anti-nutrient so what does procter and gamble come up with the manufacturer of Alestra? they put a little a d e and k in it hoping that it might be enough so that we'll absorb the amount that we but need but if you're eating the Alestra, it's going to take it out anyway well so what we have here is a product that doesn't work First of all, it's not healthy for you. It's not, it doesn't allow you to take in the fat that you need to. It makes you gain weight. And so what are we talking about? It's, it's something called that, wow. It's called wow. In the potato chips, they're called wow. Exactly. And there's something in that's like Pringles that has it in also. I don't know what the name of that is, but it has another name that's called Olean. Mm-hmm. So That's a straight watch name. out for those things. You don't want to do those. Actually, I had somebody tell me the other day that years ago she and her friend thought that they could lose weight if they drank mineral oil. Oh, my And I gosh. think it was probably the, <laughs> probably the same thinking, you know, that it would just, like, wash everything through you. Well, you can't absorb mineral oil. That's the, that's the first thing. And it makes everything wash through, but you're going to be... Plus, it's petroleum. Oh, it's, I mean, it's terrible. So, oh, let's have a little drink of, of car oil. <laughs> well, here's what... That's right. Lose some weight, because everything's going to just wash through you. So in medicine, what do we do? We tend to try and treat the symptoms. We don't look at the causes. And here's another example of it. You can't get away with that, really. So you've got to find out, why am I overweight? What is it that's led to that? What are the deeper reasons, both spiritually or psycho-spiritually and physically. And there are lots of reasons why people uh, gain weight. And there's a, on the home page, okay, of this website, go there and there's a section that talks about what you do if you're overweight and how we look at overweight and why diets don't work and some of the things that you should test uh, when it comes to the biochemistry and the endocrinology of how things work and look at some of the psycho-spiritual reasons why people are overweight at some of the sexual abuse and physical and emotional abuse that people go through often are responsible for it. Your thyroid can be off, your adrenals can be off. There's so many ways that things can be off that we don't really pay enough attention to. And then we start looking at things like Olestra or some of the 
artificial sweeteners. One of the other things that I want to point out here is that why is it that the U.S. approves things like this when the U.K. Mm. and Canada don't approve of they've it? Take, they've banned it and taken and it off the sell, market. And we sell two to, to $400 million worth of this Every a year. year. Yeah. And think about it, it's only with uh, junk food. Yeah, well, so that's how much junk food we're eating in the U.S. Well, let's look at some of the good things about Olestra. Oh, yeah? Olestra's got some really good things. It's used as an industrial lubricant. <laughs> okay? It's used as a paint additive. Oh, good. And it's good to remove dioxins and PCBs if you've been poisoned by them because oh. it'll absorb to it. And it won't come out. <laughs> so maybe it's okay to drink a little. Well, in those settings, that's what you want. You should store up your Olestra in case that happens. But aside from that, I think for human consumption, looking at nutrition, it's probably the worst thing that you can do. So we don't want to be jumping into artificial solutions. We should be looking at the underlying cause. What's gone wrong? Why do people overeat? What's happened to their uh, metabolism? What's going on with leptin and ghrelin and with insulin and, and their resistances? Well, the, other, the other thing is, is that people are really afraid of fat. I mean, mm, somebody, somebody's done a big, a great job of, of brainwashing us about the dangers of fat. Mm -hmm. Now, we already know that trans fats are bad. Those are bad fats, yep. the partially hydrogenated oils mm -hmm. and so forth, and the hydrogenated oils. Exactly. But there are fats. You know, there's that book, Fats That Heal and Fats That Kill. That's right. And there are fats that really are healthy for us. So we don't need to be using artificial fats and worrying about that. It's a gimmick. But, it's, but people think, well, fats are fat. Well, they do have a lot of calories. Well, they're actually filling, and you'll do fine on a low-carb, high-fat diet if you want to lose weight. I mean, try the Atkins diet or the South Beach diet or, or one of the diets because that are low in carbohydrates. Yeah, it doesn't take much fat to fill you up and to satiate you. Plus, you need, the, you need saturated fat. You need cholesterol. If you don't have enough saturated fat and cholesterol, you can't make vitamin D. You can't make hormones. You can't make healthy cell membranes. Your brain would collapse. Your, your risk for developing Alzheimer's would go up. So saturated fat's important. Then we get to the essential fatty acids. Our bodies can hardly make those. And if you don't have them, you're dead because they're absolutely essential for life. Why they're and called every, essential. And everybody part. needs to be taking uh, flaxseed oil. Something like it. Or fish oil. Yeah. Or eat fish. You know, we can... Well, except for... <laughs> A lot of our fish is contaminated now. It's getting harder. And if you harder. get a good fish oil, you get the purified ones where they take the mercury and the other bad things out of it. Exactly. So fat's something that's good for us. It's actually what we burn in our normal resting state. Until we ex exercise to the point where we're really exhausted, we use fat as our major fuel, not sugar. We only use sugar when we go to, to that state beyond which we start to get tired then our body starts burning that and it makes lactic acid and that's what makes us tired. But until we get to that place where we're exercising really hard, we need fat. And, and like olive oil is a healthy fat and, and, and coconut oil is healthy. Sure. But the thing that's dangerous about a lot of the fats is the way that they're processed. Exactly. You know, if they're chemically processed. So that's why we talk about looking for extra virgin oils mm -hmm. and, and cold pressed oils because you don't want them extracted from the vegetable or fruit or whatever it's coming they from. They use things like that, benzene to extract it, which yeah, is not a very chemicals good Chemicals or extra high heat too. Yeah, exactly. A lot of the vegetable oils are toxic. In fact, you can't <laughs> buy a healthy vegetable oil at most of the major grocery stores because of the way they're processed. Yet in theory, the polyunsaturated vegetable oils should be very healthy for us. They're exactly what we need. And a lot of the oils are genetically engineered. On top of that. Yeah. So you have to really know something about diet before you start approaching weight loss from the point of view of a trick with nature with substances like Olestra. Because when you do that, you start taking risks that aren't going to get you any place except into trouble. We need to look at the underlying reasons why we're overweight and why we want to lose a certain amount of weight. And then there are people who have problems like anorexia, who think they're overweight when they're really underweight. So there's, there are a lot of eating disorders. There are a lot of challenges we have with our weight. They're responsible for a lot of illnesses that we get. In fact, it costs us many, many, probably three, four hundred billion dollars a year in expenses because of that. But we still need to understand those reasons before we start finding gimmicks like using an artificial fat 
to try and solve our problems. Okay.